Hello, everybody, and welcome to this amazing webinar where we're going to be discussing everything about air mobility and infrastructure, as well as aviation, with some of uh, very interesting people who's going to be presenting and, give, and um, providing you with all the knowledge that they have in the space. Um, so personally, I'm very, very happy to, to be here. Um, I see that we have some attendees. Just please make sure to give me a like, thumbs up that you can see and hear this, uh, this video okay, correctly. <laughs> so yes, welcome everybody. I see that we have on session Mr. Rajan, uh, who is founder of uh, Starbites Ventures in India. Um, I see also Mr. Frank Beckham, um, CEO of GBI Investment Advisory Group in Berlin, um, and some other names, which I'm sorry I cannot read here. However, again, I'm very, very happy to be part of this webinar today, uh, together with amazing people. So again, we are Capital Variation, um, a startup company founded back in 2019. Um, with the sole purpose of identifying new and, and uh, well-established investment opportunities that will help us uh, achieve net zero goals. So partially um, part of our purpose and goals within capital variation is provide sea uh, level leaders that are shaping the world of finance, um, help the world make a better place, um, and also share in really amazing opportunities, investment uh, opportunities that you will have access to via obviously our uh, network um, and we are very very proud to present with you Cookie Yar of Sweden who is uh, helping shape uh, the world of uh, air mobility uh, making it disruptive to all of our uh, communities and, and the world today so we'll speak about that later in, in, a, in a couple of uh, minutes and presentation. So again, Capital Variation is uh, is proud to, to work with six uh, different companies a year um, that are uh, guiding and helping the ESG goals, environmental social governance goals, um, and are adding value to uh, our society today. So we're going to be showing you a short movie about what Cookyard of Sweden is trying to create and is trying to achieve uh, within the whole purpose of creating a, a disruptive technology in the air mobility space from Sweden uh, with expansion plans globally. But the second step is to join the Middle East. So whoever is in the Middle East right now, um, it's also going to be part of, of this amazing growth and amazing company that it's helping the uh, environment and, and achieving net zero goals. Um, I'm going to introduce you a short movie for you to understand a little bit the reason behind um, Cookie Yard. So please give me a thumbs up if, if you can see uh, the video in short minutes. And we're going to be sharing the movie for you to understand. What if we could use mobility to bring communities together without further straining the environment? What if we could see our cities, lakes, and landscapes from a different point of view? What if we could connect the rural and the urban? What if bus stops became drone stops? Imagine if we reactivated and reused what is already built instead of replacing it with new constructions. Imagine fresh air instead of a polluted atmosphere. Imagine if we could get from A to B without this and instead had more time for this. Think of air mobility as a means for a better and less polluted society. Think of connectivity and inclusivity instead of putting people on the peripheral wayside of society. Think of drone stops instead of bus stops. Think of elevation instead of stagnation. For us, mobility is not a luxury reserved for the few. With one crumble at a time, we're moving and connecting people by democratizing sustainable air mobility. Let's grow the world 
by shrinking it. So perfect. Uh, we've got uh, a little bit the, the reason behind the creation of Cookie Yard. Please give me another uh, thumbs up if you could uh, see the video perfectly. If not, again, we are recording this uh, webinar. Uh, for those who obviously don't have time at the moment and want to be uh, part of this. But uh, just to let you know, um, we will have separate calls with other uh, attendees and uh, the people who couldn't make it today because we're, 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 we know that it's a Monday. So a lot of you will be uh, busy with, with your work or um, with, with daily stuff. So in about three minutes time, we're going to be uh, presenting uh, Mr. Kim Cylinder who is the founder and the, the creator of Cookie Yard. Um, we're going to be talking about the importance of creating this sustainability, sustainable um, and carbon footprint company, uh, which will allow you to be part of it. So all the history behind it, uh, it's, it's not just because it's an idea or it's just a startup. Uh, the founder has a, has a very good track record um, of investing and consulting for companies in the aviation sector. Um, and Mr. Kim Cylinder currently is in Sweden. Um, and also he is placing the company in various strategic places in the world. Um, so we are able to monetize and grow this company, not just you know locally in Sweden. However, we're also looking to enter in uh, the Middle East and US, Latin America, Africa, uh, one crumble at a time. <laughs> That's the reason behind um, the whole structure of the company. Um, and again, we're very happy to having everybody here on the session. And uh, we are very looking forward to uh, welcome you into uh, the company. Um, it's uh, early times for the company to, to be part of. So if you're interested in the aviation sector, infrastructure, or if you just simply love aviation, um, and the future sustainability in, in the carbonizing uh, operations. Uh, this is your time to be part of it. So really, really happy to, to have you all aboard with us, Cap the Variation. And we are going to shortly uh, introduce you uh, to Mr. Kim Cylinder, who is going to join us in just a couple of seconds. Um, just want to make sure that he is very close to us. And um, I'm going to add him as a speaker. There we go. By the way, if uh, the people uh, over here have any questions, feel, please feel free to uh, give us any um, feedback on the speaker chat where you can ask any questions or if you have any doubts or you want to to add anything regarding uh, your companies or partnership plans we are also opening open for partnerships so if you have any ideas or want to be part of uh, cookie yard let us know hello kim good uh, afternoon Hi, good afternoon from Sweden. How are you? It's uh, very nice on this side of the world. We are in uh, the UAE, so it's a bit warmer for us. <laughs> um, uh, so, Mr. Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, again, very happy to, to have you on board. Uh, we've got a couple of attendees here that are really, really uh, excited to, to hear all, all about Cookie Yard. Uh, mm -hmm. I did a small presentation about the reason behind it, which is a lot more than just a company. And I would allow you to give us all of your expertise, your network, and what is Cookie Yeah, so I'll do an introduction about myself. So uh, my background is actually uh, in air traffic management. I worked for the Swedish Civil Aviation Authorities um, back from 1999, so it's been a while. Uh, where I worked with the research and development. Uh, my speciality within uh, the Swedish Air Navigation Service provider was to work with flow management. So we, we worked a lot on traffic flows and to make efficient flows between airports at that time and optimizing the utilization of airports. So 
Uh, and that's my really been my hobby since I started the company. And that's why we're also looking at Cookie Jar as a network operator, not only a Vertiport operator. But uh, from that, uh, I went to Beijing Capital Airport. I worked with the air, air traffic tower management, uh, management implementation where we provided a, a new tower system for the Beijing Olympics. Uh, and then I was in Euro control working with standardization and harmonization. So I worked on every level in terms of infrastructure when it comes to aviation. And uh, that was back in 2007. And um, that's also the time I started uh, independent business group, which is my big company. It's a company uh, which having a turnover of 30 million euro at the moment. Uh, we have uh, a contract with Qatar civil aviation authorities where we provided all the upgrades for the World Cup and, and also built the airspace. So we are airspace designer. We did all the safety work for them. We trained the staff for the World Cup as well. And we increased a lot of capacity, reduced uh, the flight times uh, in start and landing. So it's uh, quite a sustainable operation we did as well. So, and it's a 130 million euro contract. So, so that's basically the background uh, of my aviation history, so to say. From that, uh, I started uh, working with air, advanced air mobility because this is disruptive. This is totally changing the way we are going to fly and get from A to B today. So uh, with advanced air mobility, obviously we have a game chain. You see, we are, we are talking about air taxi services, but what a lot of people forget is it's already here now. We have drone, tech, drone services, drone delivery services. We have first responder services. All of these things are here now. The current rules allows for that today. So uh, what my company, IBG Advanced Air Mobility, is doing is they are helping municipalities to plan for a more structured way of operating on top of our cities, more on the urban environments. But still, there's some piece missing, where to land and where to start. And that's where Cookie Jar comes in. And we are going to more focus on that part. But it's very important to understand that there is a need, of course, to design the airspace between A and B. And luckily, I have a company that does that. So we don't really have that problem of uh, working with the cities and doing that city planning. This is not what I'm saying. This is what Europe is saying. This is the, actually coming from a European uh, Commission funded project where they have a vision of uh, that every 3000 uh, urban residents should have access to a vertiport. And this is really what we want to achieve as well in Kukidjar is not to have these expensive infrastructures that we have with heliports or even airports. They are too expensive to take long time to build. We are thinking more about bus stops. We are thinking about giving accessibility, have a presence of air mobility within your community, within your suburb, rather than city center to city center or airport to airport. If you continue. Okay. Uh, I guess, sorry but, to interrupt you. Um, yeah. I, I think uh, it's very uh, important to address, um, you know, mainly the reason why we as Capital Variation has partnered with, with Kukiyar. Um, we are very much world and uh, sustainable driven. So I guess, uh, this part of the slide is very important for some of the attendees that are here. So if you please explain yes. to us what are the verticals that you are actually addressing. Yes. So, of course, uh, Sweden has invented a lot. Uh, we have Greta Thunberg in Sweden. Uh, she yeah. did a lot for the world. We, we also have Fly Shame that came from a lobbyist uh, group in Sweden uh, creating that. But the good thing with uh, advanced air mobility is it's on battery driven flights, drones are on batteries today, uh, hydrogen tomorrow, which is totally changing the way in terms of uh, emissions in the future. We are reducing emissions a lot and this will compete with regional and, and uh, short haul flights. And But it can only compete if we get the price down for everybody to use it. Otherwise, it's going to be too expensive. You know, right. helicopters, even if they were on um, uh, electrical, they would not compete with uh, uh, with the regional aviation because of the cost. So right. that's what we are trying to do. Uh, we are also building the infrastructure in such a green way, uh, reusable way and a modular way, meaning that uh, it's built like Lego. We are very inspired by the Danish in this case. Uh, 
so we're building modules and being inspired by another company, IKEA, we are doing it in mass. Okay. In mass production. Uh, like IKEA, we are build, they are building thousands of billy tables, for example, whilst we are building thousands of modules that we can deploy at the various sites and hence get the cost down and reuse them if some site is closing down. Okay. Uh, and that's quite important. Perfect. So we have uh, just 75 minutes left. Um, I would like to uh, now invite uh, Mr. Um, Michael Peterson, who is uh, the CEO of uh, Cookie Yard. Um, he's going to be explaining us a little bit more about the business model and the revenue cash flows that it's very important for investors. And I guess uh, not only to, to understand how they're going to get their money back or what is actually uh, their investment going to be utilized and how it's cookie jar going to be able to produce, uh, you know, cash, <laughs> which is, a, a, you know, we, we love the environment. We love making things, uh, you know, things good for the world. But we also know the importance of uh, the money that is being well spent. And then we know exactly how that capital is going to be used to to have revenue streams, which is very, very important as for startup companies who are not only obviously starting at the moment, but we need to, to, to give the investors a comfort. Thank you. I take it from here and uh, I give you a short intro myself. There will be a slide further down giving you an idea of my great team that I have behind me. But shortly about me first. I, I came into this industry not very long ago, but I must uh, say I had a touch of it for the last 20 years. Why? Well, that's easy to answer. Uh, I'm a former CEO for a public company called Transfer Group, or actually Sensex Industries. We created a, a platform for um, uh, checkpoints and parameter protection. And those checkpoints were uh, placed at airports. You have seen them all with the uh, different X-ray units, metal detectors, etc. And uh, uh, other places were prisons, nuclear power plants, and those buildings needed heavily protections. So where does the drone comes in? Well, most of these places have some types of drones. What we had in that company was actually a drone identification system. So I was touching it, even though we were not building any platforms. Uh, 20 years at Sensec, and then I came in here last summer, and, and my job is, is quite easy. It's exactly what Margaret just mentioned. I have to be clear with everybody what our business idea are. We are not doing this just for fun. We're doing it because it's a green tech company, and that I like a lot. That's right, right now where we are. But it's more important to understand where do we make money? How do we create businesses? And it's quite simple, actually. I give you an example. You all know about Uber Taxi. You can see yourself, this company is not an Uber Taxi, but we are the platform to run Uber Taxis. So what do you need to have such a platform? Well, you need roads. The cars are the drones, and we build the platforms, meaning the roads. So to be able to run this business, we need to build this. So that's number one. We build platforms. Second, we rent them out. So the customers actually rent from us to create their own business on them. On top of that, we can create operation services. You need to be able to have some type of operation services to able to run this. I must say that we are trying to not take part of too much of the risk for the operations that we likewise do Uber taxis, hands over to the drivers, meaning the drone operators. But what we take care of and that we are really careful about, that the Vertiport runs their business due to EASA certifications and all the regulations needed. There are several demands today and there will be much more in the near future. Controls by United States and Europe and that will bring for the rest of the world. So if we are, have skills to be able to fulfill all that in a scalable platform, we can actually move that around everywhere. We don't have to sit down at one place and just have to A to B. We can jump, as Kim just mentioned, as bus stops. 
jump from here, jump to there. That create businesses for many, many industries. Perfect. Margaret, you want me to mention some of those industries or that comes later on? Yeah, that, that will be a, an amazing topic. Um, apart from your uh, revenue streams, uh, if you could just name them again, that that, uh, that would be very, very interesting for our investors to, to understand uh, exactly what are your revenue models and how are you going to be able to take advantage of those? Hmm. Well, to, to start with, we are quite early in the process comparing with others. I'm not saying that we are by ourselves. No way. There are others around me, but we are quite early. We are very first on the scalable revenue model. So what we can do is that we take one mechanism as we're doing today and we can copy over that and over and over and over. So when it comes to the revenue model, and uh, we bring in money from three different um, uh, turn-ins, as I mentioned before, and uh, the margins on each and one of them depends a little bit on the sizes of these vertiports and the sizes of the business that are running. Uh, I'll give you a an, an, an short example of a, a Circle K. You know, these service stations worldwide. Uh, if they look at uh, these type of vertiports, they are interesting to place them at those existing already uh, service stations that are today. And they can connect businesses into that from others, third parties like burger chains and others that would like to use that. We saw lately a very interesting from DHL and Postnode, the Swedish post office, for a, a sportswear company that like to use that as a warehouse where it can fly in those uh, parts for people to pick them up at those service stations. Did that yeah. give you an answer enough, Margaret? So, yeah, because some of the questions from uh, our very well-established investors are, okay, taxis and the technology that is going to be allowing um, transportation from A to B, it's going to take a couple of years. That's correct. And everybody knows that. Uh, but some of the questions were, okay, if in between, like, how are you going to validate that model? So this is what we're talking about here. Uh, Cookie Jar is going to create the infrastructure for existing um, uh, mobility companies, let's say DHL, which will take uh, parcels from A to B, utilizing the technology or uh, the, the, the platforms of Cookie Yard. So we're not we're not uh, flying taxis and, and, and providing uh, vertical landings for taxis, but also existing uh, uh, companies that are mobilizing A to B just parcels, uh, for example, or, or or burgers, or in this case your your contract with uh, Max Burgers in the in, in USA and in Egypt as well. So it that's yeah that that answers uh, very well our question. Well, let, let us add one more thing, which is sort of a seem is a semi business model. Correct. As you mentioned now, to to do these business study cases in these early stage, uh, I assume in ten years we're not doing study cases. It's sort of have, have others challenges then. But in, now, from the very beginning, you are allowed to, to fly uh, parcels. Uh, you don't wait for ASAS to come in with a regulation to do that. That's why we're facing those type of customers in the early states. In the later states, we would like to combine those customers with evitals when you fly humans, actually. But we can see a, a, a sort of a timeline of that, that we will start with the uh, parcels and, and have that as a sandbox, get used to that in the, in, in, in the, on the market and develop into the humans when they are um, certified to fly. They already mentioned at the end of 2024, beginning on 2025, of course, there are matureness to, to bring it in. But uh, uh, let's say in seven, eight years, I think that will be more as a common thing than an uncommon thing. Who knows? Exactly. Let us see. Exactly. So this is what we discussed. It's a bit of a visual for our guests uh, who are visual like me. <laughs> so we need to see pictures to understand. So here we've got the, uh, the drone delivery project that is actually now uh, taking place. We have a couple of case studies already, um, which in the future will be used for air taxis. Um, and that's where the whole uh, business model applies to. So we have uh, one minute left, uh, Michael, for your session. So if you please would like to add anything to, uh, to your session that will uh, uh, cover some questions for, for our guests, 
please uh, feel free to do so. Perfect, perfect. Yes, I could actually stay here for half an hour at least, but I give you a few few more things about the, this picture that we're facing right now that we are not depending on success. Uh, and I, I think you should take that in as the state where we are right now. We are right now running uh, projects with these enormous companies worldwide uh, to learn and to understand and to get the business model intact, what they are asking for. For example, Max Burgers, are they flying quality of food or just want to fly a lot of burgers? Of course, in the end of the day, they want to fly quality of food. They don't get anything in return if the burgers comes out and it, there, it doesn't taste well. And same with Circle K. If you're not in time and if you don't have the turnaround good enough, well, then it's not going to be business. Um, I would like to introduce you all to Mr. Daniel Herbert. Hello, Daniel. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Great, but thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, so yes, as mentioned earlier, um, we only talk. We're not only talking about uh, you know the vertebrae and the opportunity of uh, air drones and, and air taxis um, in this industry, but also it's it's important for investors to understand uh, the reason why um, technology companies and uh, you know worldwide successful uh, region. So just to give you uh, perhaps uh, an overview, can you please help us to understand a little bit more about, you know, Solar Group and what you're doing as a technology consultancy company with companies like Cookyar or with other companies, attracting them to the region and why now is a good time? Yeah, sure. So uh, first and foremost, you know, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, nice to be here. And uh, okay. Yeah, as you uh, as you rightly point out, we've been helping uh, companies expand uh, globally um, to, to but particularly with a particular focus on on the UAE and uh, you know so primarily Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Um, and I think it's fair to say in the current macroeconomic environment, where you know let's face it, you know Europe is uh, not the most optimistic of places at the moment. I think uh, you know the, the 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 inflationary issues and some of the challenges macroeconomically are not particularly uh, you know confidence inspiring for you know new investments and and and, and technology is and tech, but in the UAE I think it's completely different to that. If you look at the, the look at what how the UAE have grown in the last just in the last ten years, their startup ecosystem is is really underpinned by innovation and entrepreneurialship and you know the government are heavily investing in in, in technology and innovative organizations to uh, to grow their economy they are pretty uh, unashamedly putting their stake in the ground and saying you know we want to be the number one country on planet earth to invest in all of the latest you know, look at blockchain and Web three and all of the all of the latest, more innovative uh, technological um, advancements. And obviously, Cookie Jar fits perfectly into that. I mean, they've just announced flying taxis within the, within the next three years. And you know, let's face it, Sheikh Mohammed is a is a is a pretty visionary guy, right? So, um, uh, you know, the investments in the region, um, the the just the the infrastructure that they have that. I mean, the location. So if you look at the, the, the kind of the main reasons why the UAE is a good place to start, I mean, obviously, they're a growing economy, um, which is, you know, it, which is cannot be said about a lot of places uh, on the planet at the moment, you know, with their focus on innovation and technology. They've got a talented workforce. And obviously, you know, Solar Group has had 18 years of history of placing talented technology professionals all over the world. And you know, we are working with a number of UAE-based companies at the moment and you know, effectively finding them the best talent. And, and a lot of those uh, individuals are actually already there. So there is a ready-made, you know, talented workforce there. You know, they are strategically located, you know, the sort of the crossroads of Europe, Asia and Africa, making it an ideal hub for trade and commerce. They've got a very strong infrastructure. And I think the main key key driver and the key thing to you know, that shouldn't be underestimated is is the government support. You know, the UAE government is very supportive of technology and innovation. In fact, they are bending over backwards to 
attract, help and support, invest, um, coerce, seduce, whatever you want to call it. They are very, very keen to make sure that these innovative organizations like Cookie Jar are, are front and center in Dubai. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's no secret that they're, they like it in, they like everything to be quite big and quite bling and they, they want to be the first, they want to be the first to market in many, many, many different ways. And they want to be the biggest, the brightest, the fastest, the best. And, you know, I think as a, as a, as a location, you know, if you look at the, the fact that, you know, the FinTech uh, growth in, in, in DIFC is now over 1 billion dirhams a year. Wow. Um, the hospitality sector in Dubai is now at an all time high post the pandemic. So, you know, you're talking about um, occupation rates that are the highest they've ever uh, uh, that they've been since you know records began. If you look at things like the visas and the the sort of the, the attraction of digital nomads into into the region, you know there are they're, they've relaxed, so it's a lot easier to get people into into Dubai. I mean, it's it, you know it, you need a decent partner who know what they're doing, and I like to think we could add some value in that in that regard. Um, they have. Um, you know, initiatives like Hub 71, which recently launched in Abu Dhabi, which is is, is an, in a two billion dollar fund backed by Mabadala, which is one of our one of our uh, clients. So we've worked with Mabadala, we work with Adia, we work with Nikhil, we've worked with some pretty big players in the UAE, and they they don't hold back. I think it's fair to say, you know, they have a a, a very very you know, Sheikh Mohammed's vision is build and they will come and build he has and come they have and they are, they are coming and coming and coming and it doesn't look like they're getting as it's it, I mean, you know, like all of these things, people say what goes up must come down, which is uh, ironic considering what Cookie Jar are talking about with vertical, um, uh, you know, vertiports and stuff. But uh, there is no uh, evidence or no sign. I think they've learned from their from the past in terms of um, you know, expansions and, and, and going to a little bit too quickly. There's much more governance there now. I think there's a lot of negative and incorrect perceptions about Dubai. Oh, you can't go and do this. You can't get a drink. You can't, you know, and I think it's all just, it's, it's all ignorance, frankly, from people that haven't been in the region and don't know enough about the region. I think it's, you know, you can do what you want within region. You know, it's like when you go to any new, new country you respect the rules of that country and that is absolutely the right and proper thing to do but dubai is very supportive and very welcoming the weather's not bad either i mean <laughs> you don't really get in the middle of july but you know that they do have air conditioning um, and your track record so we, we wanted to just to kind of uh, um understand the, the reason why solar uh, you know having uh, operated that uh, i think 25 years already within uh, the uk market why did you decide to uh, shift the operations of, or like partially add some operations in the region? I guess, obviously, you, you, you named it all before. Um, but how do you see yourself, like, for example, uh, or how do you see this region within the next five years? We, we've recently had a trip to, to Saudi Arabia where it's not only Dubai who is making the change or like the innovation of the sector. We, we constantly go to Abu Dhabi. We constantly go to Kuwait, Qatar. Uh, Saudi Arabia, we're having a trip uh, for, for Cookie Yard. Actually, the next month, we're going to see, you know, Aramco and, and Costa and uh, really, really large companies such as STC uh, having an investment arm just utilized for technology uh, innovation and in technology investment. So, you know, if we have, you know, the first five investors joining us and they join the company, um, we will have larger investments, uh, investor partners and funds. Um, so I guess this is you know, partially some of the reasons why Solar Group is now present in the region. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we've been there since two thousand and nine, right? So we've seen you know, oh. the rise and fall. We were there when when Abu Dhabi had to bail Dubai out because of the of the oil crisis and stuff. But they bounced back very quickly. And I think you know, Dubai is a. You're right. Saudi Arabia have have woken up and, and come to the party pretty aggressively. I mean, they are open for business, very much open for business. And I think there'll be. The challenge, it's a blessing and a curse because obviously there's, you know, when you're looking at providing talented, skilled people with, with especially in, in niche markets, you've got a, you know, the war for talent is not getting any, any easier. People think that, you know, there's all these tech layoffs from Twitter and Facebook and or Meta as they are now. And actually what, what you don't hear is that these people are getting rehired very quickly by different companies. Okay. So actually, 
you know, the, the, the employment market is actually, the, you know, the most buoyant it's been for uh, since I've been in for 25 years. So, you exactly. Know, the- so, I mean, we, we just have a couple of minutes, sorry, a, a couple of seconds. Otherwise, the, the session will uh, close. But um, yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to have you today with us. Thank you very much for the insights. Uh, again, we have uh, a Q&A session um, in about 20, no, 10, 10 minutes. So if you have any questions regarding setting up your companies here in the UAE, or if you want to understand about expansion plans, talent, uh, hiring, you know, uh, people from the UAE, U, uh, US, UK, Europe, um, this is the guy. So thank you very much. And uh, now we continue with Kim. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Um, the offering. So let's talk about uh, money moves. <laughs> um, so we have uh, already discussed um, a little bit uh, about the why. Why did we create it? Uh, you created Cookyar. Um, why do you believe that right now it's, it's a great opportunity to be in the verticals, the cash flow, revenue, the model? Uh, and, and here now we are to 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 understand more about you know the the, the investment offering. Um, what type of investors are you really looking to to add into your board as a strategic, uh, you know, a move and and, and, and partnership? Um, and why do you think uh, investors should join your uh, amazing company? All right, fantastic. So um, I'll start. Why we are seeking investment? And uh, the thing is, it's going a little bit too good with our clients. <laughs> they want to start a pilot, say SAP, and we need to, uh, of course invest a bit to build these pilots. Uh, these are, uh, we secured a site in Dubai. So anybody that is in Middle East know that Dubai, they need to have a showcase to get uh, the market uh, interested in using it. So for Dubai, it's an investment for us to do a pilot. We, we are do, building something for the air show in Dubai. And obviously our site is 600 meters to the left of the air show. So we can have a free exhibition, so to say, for our partners. Um, we also have Circle K and Max. So we already have a contract. I think I need to emphasize this. We are not waiting for business. We have a business. And they are in, now ready to roll out with a pilot where okay. we would do um, uh, Vertiports for first and last by delivery, in this case of burgers. And you may ask why burgers? Well, it's a high volume business. Volume drives cost down. If we can have a lot of volume, we can have lower costs. So we need to build that infrastructure, and that is a pre-rollout arrangement that we have. Uh, so Circle K, uh, they have 14,000 sites all over the world in 35 countries. Uh, Max Burgers have roughly 200 sites in four or five countries, uh, so to say. Uh, and we uh, want to make now the recipe for them to roll it out. So I need finance to do this in a very professional way so we can scale up that deal so to say, to the rollout agreement that we have. We are asking for uh, 10 million uh, euro mm-hmm. to build roughly five sites, uh, one in the Middle East, uh, two in uh, Europe, and two in uh, the US. Why US? Well, obviously, there's different regulations in the US. Uh, it's FAA-driven. So it's the Federal Aviation Authorities, whilst in Europe is EASA rules. Once we've proven it in Either side, we can roll it out in North America and we can roll it out in Europe. Because once you're certified in one country, you're certified in all of the European countries with the ASA. The same goes for the FAA in the US and the American states. So that's what we really need need to do rapidly. Uh, That will give you a high growth. It's a disruptive industry, so you know that the, the growth goes uh, quite rapid. We have no competition. And there is no infrastructure today uh, available for this. And uh, we want to build the biggest network of vertiports with this. Um, so for 10 million euro, uh, the minimum ticket is 500k. That will give you half a percent. So for the ones that are smart, they understand that 10 million euro is 10 percent roughly in the company. So it's a high valuation, you may think, but this valuation is actually dependent on the deals that we have with these clients already. And we are the first ones talking to these type of customers. Our competition today are primarily buying land, building on the land, and then waiting for operations to come to them. 
we are convincing companies to actually rent from us. So they are paying us to come. Uh, we are building it for them. So we are making money on the build as well. And as we mentioned, like Uber, we take 30% of the revenues from all the landings and takeoffs at the site as well. But to do that, we need to show these that they are making money. And we are successful in that with Max Burgers, I can tell you. We have a study and a report coming out in a week. And uh, Circle K sees this as a huge opportunity to increase their revenues when they have to transfer to sustainable service points, not only diesel and petrol, but going to hydrogen and electric. But why not do it for both air and ground at the same time and continue to be uh, a business hub or a small hub for trade for whoever passes through their points. Okay. We have trademarked fly through. So in fact, we are any, anybody knows a drive through we have the fly through trademark. And of course, if you're a skier, I'm a vivid skier, I'll go to the north tomorrow. We also have ski in, ski out vertiport, but that's more a, a fun trademark to have when we work in the ski resorts. So that's basically the ask. So, so again, just to recap, uh, we have, uh, if I understood well, uh, we are at the moment uh, seeking for 10 million euro, um, which represents 10% of Cookiear. Um, and our ticket size ideally is 500,000 euro, which represents half of uh, a percent. So if you invest 1 million euro, that below, well, that represents 1% of cookie yard. So if, uh, you know, in a couple of years time, uh, you know, the exit strategy, whatever it might be, which we'll come to that in a minute, um, would allow you to uh, exit a, a very good amount of, of capital in a, in in a, in a year, in years time so um another question which is uh, very very important for investors I, i've been fundraising for the last eight years in my career um and um i had a conversation with team dropper who is one of the most active act, uh, venture capital investors in the us um and he told me the following thing um if you can sell uh, you know the opportunity within five minutes and i can understand it and you will know your why you will understand uh, your company from A to Z and uh, try to understand your verticals. Um, and it, the most important thing is you need to give us a clear exit of how I'm going to get my money back or how I'm going to be able to, to get my return of investment. So uh, could you please uh, give us a little bit of an overview of how do you, how do you manage to do uh, you know, since inception? Um, what is the exit strategy for Cookie Yard? And um, by when will investors will be able to say, okay, I, I've got my money returned? Well, uh, obviously this is the Series A round. We were expecting to have a Series B to, to actually uh, develop our uh, factories to produce these at a larger scale. So license factories, but still we need to be in control of the whole development process. Uh, we're using 3D printing as well for that and then doing an IPO. So there are several opportunities on, on each stage to actually do an exit, uh, but we, of course the IPO is the end goal. Why is that? Because we are expecting to be present in a global market uh, and we need to raise funds for that to build up the network of Vartiports. We want to be the next Amazon. And, awesome. uh, uh, and basically what, what I believe Amazon has as a strength is the size. The, it's hard to compete with Amazon because of their size. It's going to be hard to compete with CookieDR because of the amount of sites. We build 20 times less in cost than our competition today. With this funding, we can be even more cost efficient in building our bus stops, meaning it's going to cost 20 times less to land on our sites than the competition. Exactly. So, so by, mean, by, by this, and I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, a lot of uh, our attendees and, and some of the investor has uh, had questions around what about your competitors? So I guess this is where Cookie Yard comes to uh, as a Swedish based company. Um, they understand a key model and they know exactly how to reduce costs and mass produce um, not only one site, but create a, a network of vertiports. So that's well understood. And, and again, Kim, uh, thank you very much for uh, for giving us a brief uh, of what the investment offering is. We will have uh, uh, in about uh, 30 seconds uh, a small Q&A. 
And so I see that Mr. Frank Beckham is, is here with us. He's very, very active with, uh, with your questions. Uh, we also have uh, Sharif uh, Atia, who is the program manager at Kaust, which we're going to be seeing you uh, next month, visiting you in Saudi Arabia. And uh, we're going to see your site. And we're very excited to, uh, he's giving us his thumbs up. Um, so again, uh, Mr. Rajan, if you have any questions, we will be conducting uh, questions in just a few seconds, uh, as well as we know that Sarah is here. And we've got uh, Mr. Mantas, uh, he's uh, the Charter Sales Manager at Jet Charter London. Um, and we also have Mr. Mito Dag, who is the uh, Women Family Office uh, Director. And so please uh, welcome any questions. And uh, this is the time um, for you to, to, to tell us uh, what questions do you have and how we can address them. Okay, so we have a, a, a very interesting question from Mr. Frank Beckham. So we'll have to address questions separately. However, we had a question from Frank. Um, it is not enough to combine vertical or air stops, but to integrate first and last mile. How is this considered with the business model? Uh, so we have an answer from Mr. Kim uh, from Beckham. Good questions. In sh good question. In short, we have two type of modules. One that is delivered delivery module and one that is plane landing module. This can be combined at the vertical side to build uh, the overall platform, um, which customers that start with first and land mile modules can add any modules to enable the larger vehicles or traffic amounts over time. Hence, so uh, it's, it's a scalable platform over time. Um, so when air taxis operations are uh, finally ready to, to operate, um, they can use the same modules. That's a, that's a great question. I had an, another question earlier from one of our investors. Uh, he mentioned to us what will be the next step for Cookiejar into the U.S. Again, the platform that it's going to be um, case studied, show case studied, will be in Sweden for the innovation hub, Swedish innovation hub. That will be the first platform. The next, the second platform will be. Uh, in Dubai, and uh, which we are already in talks with the RTA, which is the the, the, um, the entity that regulates air mobility, um, and we also looking to enter uh, Saudi Arabia uh, heavily with some of the biggest and largest companies there, um, and subsequently we will want to um, move the company to the US um, with the help of, of obviously partnerships and and many companies that will love uh, to have uh, Cookie R as a uh, business model that would allow the operations to move faster, uh, save money, and obviously save time and, and reduce the carbon emissions that we all are very, very uh, worried about. And, and that's one of the reasons why we partner with, with Cookie R in this case. So again, we are happy to take uh, any more questions if you have. Um, if you don't have any more questions, please uh, make sure that you uh, send us an email directly. Um, you all have uh, our LinkedIn, so you can have direct conversations with each other, or also you can send us an email uh, to margaret at capitalvariation.com, um, and we can uh, schedule a call separately with you to understand more about your needs and how we'll be able to integrate Cookie Yar into your operations. Um, we are very happy to have everybody here on this webinar today. Um, looking forward to any more questions, and if you have um, any other questions uh, directly from Mr. Kim, uh, Kim? He is here to uh, to let us know exactly. I think there is one more question, Mr. Salander. Thank you for your clear insights um, and investment opportunities. Pretty interesting. Um, thank you all very much for your time, and we hope to see you in next session um, with another investment opportunity. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a fantastic uh, start of the week. Thank you. <laughs>